Hello Yarn Gang, Nikki at Bunny Craft Oxford here with another Die With Me video. Um, thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We are going to first pick out whatever is floating. It's a flax seed. I have no idea how a flax seed got into the water, but okay. So we're going to be doing some yarn dyeing today you'll be surprised to know and i want to continue on the theme of rainbows so if you remember a couple of episodes ago we dyed my pride colorway and that was done by twisting the skeins um as you would buy them you know just sort of twisted into into the skein and dipping them three different times into three different colors to achieve the the rainbow i'll leave a link to that video in the description below hopefully editor nikki will actually remember to do that so we're going to play with the same colors so we have our fluorescent yellow which i know looks orange we have our fluorescent fuchsia so more neons and then we have our um turquoise i absolutely love this color and what we're going to do this time is we're going to take the skein and we're going to dye half of it in the water, twist it and dip the other half so that the colours overlay part way. I think I'm going to try and zoom out a little bit because I have a feeling. Oh, there I am. <laughs> I have a feeling. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, my phone had decided to zoom in, like really zoom in. I could see my hands were looking so much bigger than normal. Um, I might also lift this up a little bit. You'll think I'd be ready with these things, but um, no, why wouldn't I be? Why would I be even? I want you to experience the beauty of making a YouTube video with me. And to be fair, I'm not a professional, so this is what happens. There we go. Oh, wobbly. There you go. Oh, you get to see my like super funky trousers. I got these from um, from Bangladesh. Um, my best friend, also known as my sister, um, is from Bangladesh and lives back there now. And I think she actually got them for me rather than... But I don't remember which pair I bought, but I've been to Bangladesh twice and it was genuinely the most amazing experience. Um, the first time I went for Eid as well, which is um, the celebrations at the end of Ramadan and it goes on for three days and it was magnificent. I've never eaten so much food in my entire life. So, <laughs> without further ado and with no more, um, I think this is fluorescent yellow. I'm now starting to doubt my yellows. Is my fluorescent yellow in a bigger pot? Hold on a minute. Right, I went and got a tissue and dipped it and I think we can all agree this is pretty fluorescent. It just looks so dark, like when you see it like this, it looks so dark. Okay, I'm also, I'm also doing this without gloves on, which I'm going to regret almost instantly. So, we are dyeing 120 grams of yarn today. It is mystery yarn, I honestly don't know what it is. Um, I found it in my stash, unlabeled. So it could be Corydale, it could be Blueface Lester, it could be Paul Polworth, I, I have no idea. All I know is it's, it's not Marina, because it, it just doesn't feel anything like Marina. Right, so I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to put one spoonful, swish it around. Uh, so that was 15 millilitres of the 1% solution. I'm going to put another 10. And I'll tell you why just 10. 1, 2. Because we are not dying the full 120 grams in this colour. So we are mostly going, we're going to do probably about what, 60 grams of the yarn technically. So I, in my mind, and this is just literally how my brain's working, in my mind, I still want a very pigmented yellow, but I don't, I don't want to not be able to exhaust it. So, let's get some more. 
So this was pre-soaked, so here it is. I have my 20 gram mini that I like dyeing with, um, just so I can do swatching. And then I have this undetermined yarn. So let me take you to the bigger pan. Let's do, oh, we're stuck, we're stuck. So this is my bigger pan. I'm going to use it to explain. So I want to dye this in three sections. I'll be right back. All right, sorry, that was Amazon. <laughs> Had to open the door. All right, so I, ooh, bing. I want to dye the skein in three sections with each section overlapping halfway mixing the colors up so this is how we're going to get our green this is how we're going to get our orange this is how we're going to get our purple and then creating a rainbow all the way around that's the plan if the last couple of videos are anything to go well if the last video which was breaking acid dye is anything to go by my plans don't always go how i want them but i still end up learning a lot and i still end up with beautiful yarn so whatever happens happens so let's you get you back to uh, the dye pot there we go anyone got seasickness yet hopefully not let's straighten you out you get to see a bit more of me that way but hey that is fine oh I am having one of those days where things are just not going my way. That's fine. Okay, so let's start this before you all get bored and go do something else. So, I'm going to partly dip dye this. Yep, that's new. But really, I'm going to pop half of this in here make sure that it's all nicely I'm gonna put a little bit more than half there we go and i'm not quite sure how exactly i'm going to do the other two colors so that i get some of the yellow to stay i think i'm going to have to twist the skeins like move the color around weirdly a little bit but we'll see and i want this to be very bright and it is ending very bright so we're going to leave this in here i'm going to put a turn it around one more time and there we go and i will see you in 15 minutes okay so it's been 15 minutes there is still a very very slight color to the water so I'm going to take this out I'm just going to Actually, hold on let me get my gloves why do I not have my gloves tell you what happens when you don't have your gloves all of these beautiful yellows happen I am really disorganised today. I apologise. I am. Um, I need to open the windows. I think there's steaming up in here. Um, it's a really rainy day, and it's a Friday as well. I've just finished work about 15 minutes before I started the video. Um. Um. <laughs> so I'm not sure that my head was quite in in video mode, but why not? Right, I um, need to make sure that the yellow doesn't touch anything else at the moment. So I want to try something. I've got a dry twisted mini skein here. I'm going to put it, put it in here and see if I can collect the very, very little bit of yellow left. Um, so that I don't have to redo the bath. I'm going to swish it around. Just 
this will be like a little bonus cane right i'm going to give this five minutes in here to see what happens and if not we'll reset the bath right i think our little skein has actually picked up um the rest of that dye i can't see any any more color in here i'm just gonna lift this out and squeeze it out ah, hot hot um yeah this looks clear i don't think there's any more yellow in there cool so i'm just gonna quickly show you a little, I, I unwound it, a little pastel yellow and so I'm going to unwind it and I'm going to regret this because I didn't put a tie on it. One of my nylon zip ties does not feature in this so that way regret lies because that way Skein mess lies. Okay. Eh. I should be able to do this. <laughs> it's just because it's wet. I can't necessarily find. Oh, there it is. Oh, so I did have it. Ta da. I'm going to retwist it because I have a feeling we might need this for the blue as well. But we'll see. Uh, okay, so I'm first going to move. So if I wanted it, if I wanted it to be fifty fifty, I would put the the nylon tie here at the top and then dip half of the skein. So so hard. So dip half of the skein into the blue. And then I'd end up dipping the other half into the pink. However, that's not really what I want because I want to be able to preserve a little bit of each of the colours. So, I think I am going to move it about here so there's going to be a little bit of that left. So... Hmm. Yeah. God, this is quite, quite complicated. There's a lot, of, a lot of thinking involved. Yeah, so when I dip this, we're going to get a bit more. We're going to get the blue up to here. So I'm not getting caught. So we'll get blue on all the bits with the white and then bits of the yellow. And then that means that we'll also have about this much left of the white that is going to be just pink. That, I think, is how the theory goes. I keep squeezing more and more water out of this and then collecting it again by dunking it in there. So we had try and keep the same sort of die ratio so we had one of the big ones of the yellow and then we had one of the five mil ones let's not spill the jar i think because these are quite pigmented colors and again we're not dying um, the full skein I think this should be enough we can always add more dye but we can't take dye away so I think that's why it's important to in my mind be more sparing okay dokely here it goes about there about there I can't make up my mind ladies and gentlemen yeah, about there. Okay, I just marked myself like where where I wanted to stop. Well, hey, we got blue and we have green, and there's plenty left for the pink. 
Where did my tongs go? There they are. So I'm just going to move this around. I imagine it is going to be quite a... Oh wow, it's a beautiful green. Oh, I'm so pleased with this. Ah, <gasps> so pretty. I absolutely love... Oh, I'm loving that green. I'm absolutely loving the blue. The blue is... So the blue is a, a turquoise turquoise by um, Jacquard and it is not a fluorescent colour. I do not, there isn't a fluorescent blue. Um, I tend to use this blue when I want a really, really bright blue or I use the cerulean blue as well. But for this purposes, for the tones that I wanted, I think this was ideal. I'm just moving the yarn around so that we get a little bit more of an even coverage. Um, I wonder whether I want it a little bit darker. It's coming on. Yeah, I think I'm just going to put the yarn to the side and I'm going to add another 7.5 mil of the of the blue just because it is not as pigmented as the yellow so there we go and then I need to close the jar work quickly Nikki okay switch this around put this back in move it around to get more colour yeah this is more like it so really I think this is really pretty I've got a bit of specks of the blue where the yellow is. This is really annoying. Here. Let's see if I can I work quickly. like if you put if you work quickly and put a bit of water on where you've got some color transfer um you can actually dilute it enough provided you don't have too much acid in the yarn already there is quite a bit of acid in the yarn but i think yeah i think i got most of it there's a little bit of blue but i'll survive oh no and so will I yarn. Right. I don't know why I'm sticking my fingers in the nearly boiling water. I like doing stuff like that. Uh, my tongs. What did I tell you about being utterly disorganised today? I just, what is wrong with me? I think I was too organised at work. And that's why. I'm just going to do this it helps tidy up the skein a little bit flip it around so the reason I'm flipping it this way and then this way is because when I rest it against the lip um, different parts of the skein is exposed in different ways to the dye so I just want to make sure that um, I'm getting all parts of the skein exposed to the dye in equal ways. Cool. Uh, right, we're going to give this our usual 10-15 minutes to allow the blue to uh, uh, finish exhausting and then we'll be back to see whether the bath is clear. We'll reset it if we need to and then we'll do the fluorescent fuchsia and I'm a little bit scared with that one. Right, so I think our bath is as clear as going to be. Just going to 
give this a final swoosh around if there's any even the smallest chance of picking up any extra pigment that might still be in there it will do that but I think yeah you can see the water's pretty clear and there's just a blue reflection on this side of the pan or at least that is what I'm hoping for this is hot 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 that's fine okay fuchsia why am I taking my gloves off? This is this is the most colourful colour. I'm going to start with just one of these with the fuchsia. I don't know what the two... I think I need a bit more water in here. So let me just get... Because we've lost some of the water. Hold on. Right, so I made the executive decision to get a new, um, new lot of water in here. Um, just because there was a little bit of blue left it was very very like residual but I thought it may change the colour enough that it mattered um, so I am going to move this to what I think is roughly well, mini skein is not playing ball but what is roughly the centre of the green a little bit more that way I think and do a little bit more yep so we've got our white at the bottom we've got some blue on each side we've got our green at the top and we're going to leave about this much yellow and about the same amount of green of blue maybe a little bit more blue okie dokie right fuchsia i'm going to rinse the cap out in here um so there is just over i think it's probably 18 cups of water rather than 16 and two tablespoons of acid citric acid because fluorescent fuchsia is a very um fussy pigment I'm going to only put one of these in here swish it around you can see it is incredibly pigmented I love it though I love it so much so excited for this color I, almost, I want to put more even though I know I'd regret it but let's see what happens so that's yeah it's about right so we're just going to pop this in here to about here use my fingers because the water's not that hot yet and dry my fingers and then move things around and you can see instantly it's just it's it's ridiculous it is so pretty the blues and purples and things that we're getting are really pretty the orange is gorgeous i'm really annoyed by that one green speck just just there you can just see it but such is life there is always that one green speck and that pink i mean I'm sorry let me lift it out so you can see it look at that pink I love it absolutely love it the blue so the, I know that the blue is not turning purple it is just looking very very blue I'm hoping that as more of the fuchsia gets absorbed it will turn purple if not we'll have to add a bit more fuchsia um it is I don't know whether, I guess it's like a raw colour, essentially to deepen blue you add a little bit of pink to it and then after a certain point it stops being deeper blue and turns into purple. So it's looking purple like in the water over here but as soon as I pick it out it just looks deep blue. So... 
I'm loving the orange. That orange is just so gorgeous. And it looks glazed. You can see like the yellow underneath. So maybe that's that's how it's going to be. And that does, I mean, the turquoise looks more teal than turquoise, to be honest. Um, and that might be because if there was just a little bit of yellow still left in the pan, then it took turquoise and turned it into teal. Um, but we're still getting a, a, a rainbow. And uh, that's that. I, I know I'm just swooshing the yarn around and moving the yarn. I'm trying to pick up as much. Oh, we are getting a bit of purple on this side. I'm trying to pick up as much of that fuchsia as possible. I think what I might do is what I did with the blue as well and add another um, another spoonful, but just another seven and a half mil. And because this this pink that we see here, this is going to take a really long, about 45 to 40, 40 mil, oh my God. Let me start again. So the pink that we see here is going to take a very long time to be absorbed by the yarn. I don't know what it is about Dharma's fluorescent pink pigment, but genuinely it takes a very long time. And normally, so 45 minutes to an hour to get most of the color in, and then you leave it in the pot to cool. And it's that cooling process that seems to help exhaust the dye and bring up the, the pink um sometimes what tends to happen as well it happens more with purple pop than it does with the fluorescent fuchsia but as soon as you move the yarn so the water will look clean and then as soon as that you move the yarn the pink will leach out of the yarn it is just the most bizarre thing honestly and it can be really frustrating it also does bleed when you wash it if it doesn't set properly but we'll see I'm hoping that there is now just trying to open open the yarn I'm wondering whether the because it says the mystery fiber right I'm wondering whether it's a non superwash fiber but um, <laughs> we are getting bit more purpley now let me see if I can bring it up to the camera without tangling the yeah you can see we're getting a bit more purple so as that fuchsia absorbs into the rest of that blue it should keep turning more and more purple I am going to I've got it on quite high even though it's not bubbling yet I'm going to leave it on here and you are going to get shaky cam in about 45 minutes because I need my phone and I can't just have it in this position um, much longer. Also, I would think, yeah, I'm running out of battery. <laughs> so I, I need to charge this thing. Um, but yeah, this is, if you could see the, the grin on my face right now, I don't know, let me, let me move the phone. Let me unclip it from here. Right, I nearly dropped my phone in here, so I ended up having to stop it. But, um, so these are my kitchen tiles. And this is my giant grin, because this is what I wanted. This thing right here, this is what I wanted. Because, check this out. We have our greens, we have our blues, we have our yellows, we have our rain oranges. We have our purples and we have our pinks and we, ladies and gentlemen, have our rainbow. Just three colours. We have made six colours. So, yay! Sorry, you're, you're being um, subjected to the Joker. <laughs> I um, I'm really pleased. Anyway, I'm going to go and grab some food and spend some time with my bunny and I will be back in about an hour to do some shaky cam and show you how this thing is doing but you can see there is so much pink that um it's gonna be here a while Diddly. shaky cam time 
We have purple. Oh, we have steamy. <laughs> yeah, we have lots and lots of um, different shades of purple. So it's really, it's really good fun. Definitely a uh, tonal. There's still, there's still quite a bit of blue. But there's also, as you can see, quite a bit of pink. So I'm going to take this off the hob and figure out how to fit it into this pan so that this stays in this pan because what happens is there is a water transfer that goes kind of up the yarn and kind of spills over in here and I'm going to leave it to cool for the rest of the evening and um, might might film tomorrow to show you whether the water's cleared or not it better clear I'm telling you it better clear but yeah we have rainbow. I can't wait until this is dry and I can show it to you. Bye. Hello. Hello. So this is our dried yarn. By the way, if I sound a bit out of breath, it's because I've been running up and down the stairs to try and get this set up for the last couple of minutes. So um, yeah, I should probably avoid it until I got my full breath back, but I was too excited to show you this because oh my. Lord, can you see how beautiful our yarn is? I'm so excited. Turns out as well that um, we had two minis that were attached to um, the full skein. So I've twisted them in slightly different ways with, you can see on one end we've got the purple and the yellow together and on the other end we've got like the sort of the blue and the orange. So this is just to show you how the same yarn can look very, very different depending on how the yarn dye has twisted it. So just to just to recap my set to myself more than anything, what we did was we started by dipping a, just over half of the yarn into the yellow. We then followed it in with the blue and we finished it off with the pink and we made sure that we overlaid the yellow with first the blue and then we overlaid the yellow and the blue with the pink so if you were to think about how we dyed it first this was just the yellow we then overlaid the yellow and the blue so this was the blue and then finally this is the pink so this took me a while to figure out so this is how we've managed to create a beautiful rainbow even though we used only three colors and uh, the yellow and the pink are neon so this is fluorescent so this is dharma's um fluorescent yellow and this is dharma's fluorescent fuchsia so technically if i'm ever able to find my black light this would um this would glow in the dark i've just had a thought about where my my black light might be so just, just one second <laughs> i found it I found it so exciting oh well that took a couple more runs up and down the stairs it was it was in a ready project bag and I remembered I'd started knitting a pair of socks which are not finished yet uh not even the first one's finished yet and I just was curious because they they had fluorescent in them um dyeing them as well how the sock looked as it was knitting up but yeah so check this out can you see the glow? Let me go and draw the curtains for a second. It's going to be a bit dark, but we'll see. Oh. Okay, not that dark, but still. You can definitely see the fluorescent. You can see that the, the blue isn't fluorescent but because the pink and the yellow are, I think you can see it best in the minis where I've twisted them. But this is so cool. Oh, can you imagine how pretty your socks would be and just how awesome 
it would be if you could go to a rave dressed in these beautiful neons. Right, let's get some more light in here. Winston. Winston is my orchid and I have had him for four years now and he blooms without fail from around February every year all the way up to October and November and at the moment he is on his second bloom. I don't know why this year he decided he was going to have a massive bloom, shed all his, his flowers, and then just go again. But it's maybe because the weather's been really weird and we had a warm spell and then a cold spell and now a grey spell? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> can you tell I live in England? I'm talking about the weather. Shock. So, this is our beautiful rainbow um, yarn that we dyed um, as part of, I, I'm not going to call it our Pride Month mini series because there's only just been two episodes where we've dyed rainbow although maybe next year for pride month i could dye rainbow for four weeks in the, on the trot in different ways that'd be really cool but yeah um i hope you really really enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed this technique um i would highly recommend that you give it a go um and you can do something similar with food colouring if you don't want to buy acid dyes or you know you can try it with um, different colours so you could try let's see what we can try hmm I mean green and blue could create something that sort of from green to blue to teal and you could do reds and pinks and blues um again they'll be more complimentary you could do just just pinks um pinks <laughs> pinks yellows and reds yeah it's a bit hot i mean because essentially you get all the colors that you want with your three primaries the 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 yellow the pink slash red and the, the blue so give it a go it's really good fun um you can just just before I go, I promise I'll stop talking in a second. Um, and we might actually do this, but we'll do it maybe with um, actual primary, so yellow, blue and red rather than the neon and the sort of turquoise that we've got here, is you can have a pat the yarn in a pan as you see it here. And using some sort of pouring technique, starting from the corners, do blue on this side, do pink or red on this side and leave a little bit in the middle so that they don't meet and then you take your yellow in the middle going out you will have shorter sections and here where we have the continuous section so no color is ever repeated in this particular one you will have your yellows repeating on two two parts of the loop you'll have your greens repeating on two parts of the loops and you have your purple repeating on two parts of the loops and it will be only your blue and your pink here at the end that are not going to be repeating twice in a single loop and usually these loops are about two feet long I think yeah I think oh, it could be a foot I forget I've got it written down somewhere you, like what the sort of standard size of a skein is if you know do oh crap crud 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 if you do know leave it in the comments below please um i know the different companies have different size skeins and stuff but i do know that there's usually like a standard a standard um measurement for them um so yeah you could do that the one i'm so sad about the the one blue bit the one issue that you may get when you're dyeing something similar in the pan would be that you don't know what's happening underneath and colors especially if you use pink and some blues can overtake and they can spread underneath so you will have maybe a lot of yellow at the top but not so much yellow at the bottom of the skein where they'll just travel under but it really very much depends on how much water you have in the pan to begin with how much yarn you have in the pan to begin with as well how much acid you have so that um so 
how quickly will the yarn absorb the, the dye, how much heat you have, <laughs> and of course whether your yarn is superwash or non-superwash. Superwash yarn absorbs colour much faster and absorbs much more colour as well, um, from my experience. This may not be true for all non-superwash yarns and superwash yarns, um, but it tends to be much more saturated than non-superwash yarns. It's something to do, I guess, with the process of superwashing the yarn, which has to do with smoothing out the fibres um, and I think removing some more of the linolin from the natural fibre. Anyway, <laughs> this this is more like me. I've been going on for about 10 minutes, so let's wrap this up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you will try this at home. It is, I can't tell you how much fun it is, and I'm loving the purple and the yellow. Um, if you liked this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, as it really, really helps. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss future content. And if you really, really like this video and you would like to um, support the channel further and help me make more of these videos, you can use the links below to either buy me a coffee or you can buy one of these yarns. I am keeping the minis because that is what I tend to do, but I will be putting this skein up on, um, on the shop. I will try and link it below if it's already listed on the shop, but do keep an eye out. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.